All right. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> so um, all of these adventure games were controlled through scripts, and um, to make game development easier, what the game companies would do is they would create a game engine which provides all the facilities for doing graphics and sound and, and interaction and things like that. And then you would program uh, the game in a scripting language. And the, the game designers who might not be programming experts uh, just have to learn a, a simple programming uh, language uh, rather than having to be uh, fully experienced with C or C++ or whatever the game's written in. Now, this is actually running under... Um, what, what this is running under is a thing called ScumVM. And it's an open source re-implementation of LucasArts uh, game scripting engine, which was called Scum, for Scripting Creation Utility for Maniac Mansion. And some people on the internet basically reverse engineered the game engine and figured out how it worked, and then wrote their own implementation of it. And then you can run this on lots and lots of different platforms. Um, for example, there's this nice little toy that I picked up last year. It's called the GP2X Wiz. It's a basically a handheld game device designed for running emulators. Um, and you can run this on you know, all sorts of handheld PCs and different platforms and, and so forth. And so one of the other advantages of using a scripting language is that um, you can separate out the platform specific stuff into the game engine and then you can have your scripting logic be independent of the platforms. So for example, this would have been early 90s, so they would have had a version out for PC, Mac, um, and probably Mega as well. Um, and I know Sierra re released games for the Apple II and um, Tandy 1000 and, and, and so forth. And um, <coughs> so they could easily port their games to different platforms simply by porting the engine and they wouldn't have to, have to actually uh, modify any of the, the scripting logic. <coughs> so what I'm going to uh, be doing today, first of all I'm going to start off um, by talking a bit about um, some of the things that I've done in the, in the past with game scripting, because this was sort of a big area of interest uh, to me when I was younger. Uh, and then I'll talk about how you can add scripting facilities to your own games. Um, and I'll be focusing mainly on that. I'm just going to give you a bit of a background about some of the things that I've done. So I, I was interested in, so uh, another sort of type of adventure game I was interested in was the ones made by Sierra Online. And I'll just bring up one of them uh, now to show you. Uh, which I need a DOS emulator for. Okay, so um, this is a game called uh, King's Quest, um, <coughs> and this is using um, an interpreter called AGI, which stands for Adventure Game Interpreter. And this is a, basically a similar idea to Scum, in that um, the logic of the game is controlled through a scripting language, and um, all of the things to do with displaying graphics and uh, interacting with the player and getting user input and so forth uh, was managed by um, the game engine. So, as a game programmer, you wouldn't have to worry about the technical details to do with particular platforms. You would just worry about the, um, uh, the actual game logic. So, for example, if the player types look, then it brings up a message. If the player walks in a particular area on the screen, they'll fall in the merge and drown. And um, <coughs> so, I really love playing these games. And I thought, one day I got to thinking, well, I wonder how they work, right? I wonder what, what goes on. Um, behind the scenes. And um, I spent some time writing a program called AGI Hack, which would basically extract all of the resources from the game, so the images and, and sounds and things. And you could, you could um, view uh, the images that are in the games, and you could see what rooms there are and so forth. And um, I was working with a couple of other people via the internet. We were reverse engineering this, and uh, there's another guy that worked out how the, the scripting language works in terms of bike code. So this uses a bytecode scheme, which is, I guess, a lot like Java in concept. With Java, you have a source file, and then you compile it into a class file. And that class file is called bytecode, and that is uh, platform independent, uh, and it can run on any operating system as the Java virtual machine. Similarly, AGI bytecode can run on any 
system for which there's an AGI interpreter. And when I was in first year uni, I, um, I wrote uh, a program which lets you edit the games and modify them. And I'm just going to bring that up here. <coughs> so it was called AGI Studio. <coughs> this was written in um, Delphi, which is um, uh, it's basically like a like Visual Basic, but the language is based on on Pascal. Um, and so this, I, most of my early programming was was done in Pascal. I didn't uh, come in with other languages until I got to uni. Um, so, for example, I can bring up the um, logic for Rome two. So this is the script that represents Rome two and all the things that can happen. So this was the room that I was I was just in before. And so the way that um, uh, AGI works is that there is um, a certain set of global variables which you have access to in the scripts and you can change them and test them and then there's various different uh, commands that you can run. So this was, uh, so this code is um, the AGI Studio and when you open the game it will actually decompile the bytecode from the game and then you can make some changes to it and then you can recompile uh, that and then you can run the game again. So um, if we scroll down, this is the initialization code. So there's, there's 256 variables and 256 flags. So flags start with the here. So F5 corresponds to um, the uh, initialization flag, which is this is the first time the script has been run. Basically what the game does is it continually runs the script in a loop uh, for as long as you're in that room until you go to another room and then start writing another script. So there's some initialization code here. So for example, uh, load, pick, and draw, pick. Um, these will load one of the picture resources. You can also browse through the picture resources that are in the game. Uh, so it will load one of those pictures, and in this case, it's passing V0 as a frame. So V0 is the current row number. So when you say load, pick, V0, that will say load, pick, picture whose number is the current row number. In this case, will be picture number two. Uh, and then this draws it, and then after it's finished with it, it gets rid of it from memory. Um, so if we just scroll down past the initialization code to some of the things that you can do. So, for example, here's the code uh, where it, it's got um, uh, different things uh, that, that the player can type. So it says if the player says this thing, then do this other particular thing. So, for example, um, I can uh, I can easily modify these. I can say uh, I can change that. I say I don't think he'd like that. And then I can say uh, file compile. And then I won't. Uh, I can't, could run it directly from here, but um, DOSBox running under OS ten is actually better at DOS emulation than DOS under Windows XP. Strangely enough. So if I uh, load the game again, uh, and I'll just go into that, oops. So I'll go into room two. There's actually um, debug modes in these games. You can press Alt D, uh, and then you can do things like issue debugging statements, like teleport to room two. So I can teleport to room two, okay? Uh, and then if I say pet alligator, it'll show that it's changed the message. Okay, so this was quite exciting when I when I first got this working because I sort of I wanted to make my own games and I ended up spending so much time writing uh, writing all of the tools and everything to develop with them that I never really got around to making many games or nothing of interest anyway. I did write Tetris in AGI that was interesting. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just spend a bit of time sort of going through some other parts of the script showing some of them too, just to give you an idea of the sorts of things that, um, that you can provide in the game engine. And the thing about when you're um, implementing scripting within a game engine, it's really up to you how much you want to uh, expose to scripts and how much you want to have uh, implemented in the whole engine. Later on I'll be showing you um, 